Well, welcome to this episode, and I guess it really is the end of the first part of our journey. So probably done about 3,000 miles, this map just shows about two, um, obviously a lot of tripping around in between all of that. Uh, but Fiona's going to just give you a little bit more of her thoughts about the decision around coming back home to New Zealand while I stay on the boat. And then she's going to reflect on the six months that we've done so far. And then the big dollar reveal. We have a couple of goes at it because we've got to sort out how it's actually going to look for you. But in the end, you're going to see just what does it cost to run a boat like Awanui NZ. Hi guys, it's me. Um, by now you would have caught up on the news, no doubt, if you've been following our YouTube channel, that um, the decision was made that I'm not going to be staying full-time on the boat. Um, Mark seems to tell everybody I'm not coming back to the boat. That's a bit of a misnomer. I do enjoy the boat, love it, um, but feel that doing a full year on it and just coming home for a short while doesn't sort of fit in with... Um, what I'd like to be doing and so that was a really tough decision to make because I know it's been Mark's dream to do this and I know he wants his first mate next to him which is really cool and as much as I want to be there and do that over the last six months have found um, and it's been really good it's been a real growth what our differences are and um, predominantly I've realized that Mark and it might sound, sound really ridiculous after 30 four years, 33 years of marriage, 35 years of knowing him, that Mark's all about the adventure and that he loves to have an adventure. And of course, with being an airline pilot, having that adrenaline rush every time you take off the aeroplane on the, on the runway and land, um, uh, you know, that's the same sort of sense, I think, that he gets from different adventures he does. So he's really at this stage in his life about lots of excitement. I'm sort of at my stage where I've had so much excitement in my life. It's been a real, real ride with um, being married to Mark, that's for sure. And um, so it's made me realise that I do miss my family, miss the grandchildren, miss my life back here in New Zealand. You're really proud of myself, I suppose, and things that I have done and how I have achieved. Um, I absolutely love the boat and so pleased that we've done it. And it's just going to be a really neat time over these next few years just to see the differences and what happens and to see what Mark does. And I suppose the, the thing was also Mark's comfort zone is quite different to mine. So that was something that we had to sort of navigate as well. And I don't want to be his handbrake. Um, that's something that's really important to me. I, I don't want to be that wife that stops him from doing what he wants to do just because... I'm not comfortable doing it. So um, as much as I'm going to really miss Mark because we love doing things together and being together, yeah, um, a little bit strange feelings. I suppose the big thing for me is just the thought that I'm letting Mark down. I suppose ultimately a big ask to just keep doing something that you don't want to spend your whole life doing, but um, more than happy, you know, for four or five months of the year to do that. So, um, yeah, as you can see from how I've reacted, it hasn't been a light decision to make. And um, it's going to be a bit strange, I suppose, because a few people have said, oh, my God, you know, Mark, your handbrake will be gone. Um Sometimes I suppose it's good that I am his handbrake, but um, yeah, at least I'll be asleep when he's doing or trying out anything crazy <laughs> um, and just hear what's happened in the morning. And meanwhile, um, we'll be heading off next Sunday. I can't believe how quickly it's gone being home. So Sunday a week, we'll head back, get back to the boat in Tunisia, which I'm really looking forward to and just to see how things are. And our good friends will be there, and then we will head from there across back to Italy. So it'll be an overnight um, adventure, and then we'll see what we do. And um, yeah, and then Kath will arrive, and we'll have time with her, and um, then it'll be time to say goodbye. So to Mark, um, which will be a pretty surreal moment as well. I'm not sure if we'll video that, um, but yeah. 
Anyway, that's that. Um, if you've got any questions or are there any wives out there that want to, that are thinking about doing this with their husbands or have been in similar situations, love to hear from you. Love to hear how it's gone. Or any guys that are out there that are doing it on their own, um, any words of wisdom for Mark? Um, and he's had lots of people who have put their hand up to say that they'd like to come on the, the boat with them and do a leg or so. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be really good. But as with all things in life, um, there are processes you go through to reach decisions. And this has been a pretty tough one. But um, that's it. And um, we've got another 10 days of working our asses off here. And then um, back off to the boat. So thanks for all your support. Love it. I uh, love the comments that come through. And um, here's to the next part of the journey. Right, so great. I asked Mrs R, sweetie, if she could do a little video just saying what she thought about the last six months. Um, that's not what we got. So um, hopefully coming up soon is take two of what Fiona thought about the first six months on the boat, where we went, things we did, people we shared it with. That was the goal. But, um, yeah, we got a bit more than that. And um, gets you thinking, really, doesn't it? So, anyway, here's her take two. So, hi there. So, Mark's asked me to do a bit of a review of my reflections, I suppose, on what the last six months have been like being on the boat. Um, that was the brief he gave me last time and I sort of went off topic in terms of what I did, which he's edited down, which is lovely, but that sort of gives you the understanding of the last bit of that. Um, so now I'm going to try and stick to the brief properly. And he also mentioned that it looked like I was in a prison or something the last time I did the last one with the white walls. So I thought, oh, what better way than to find a nice backdrop to be outside. So um, this is outside on our property there's just a bird that flew by behind me and um, it's quite a nice evening and um, as you can tell we're still all doing the Blossom Valley as you can see on our logo on my top but uh, Mark has kindly given me the night off so he's over in the kiosk and our neighbour Ken is parking and I thought right I'll get this done so that we can get this out to you guys because you'll be all hanging by tender hooks no doubt wanting another video and uh, it's been really difficult to try and get the stuff done and of course, because I'm involved in trying to get it done, it always slows things down. I remember at the start, every time they brought the boat back in, thinking how on earth are Mark and I just going to handle this on our own? And as you know, we learnt that and we managed to get braver in things that we did and to get our confidence. So that was all really cool. Uh, and it was a quite surreal moment heading off with the two of us and going through to this cute little bay and Mark loves to anchor and I really understand what he means now because having done both I don't mind the marinas for like a reset you sort of it's nice once a week or once every 10 days because you can just uh, walk straight from the boat onto land you don't have to get the tender down and it's nice for a reset but the marinas are not like it is when you're in those bays those bays are just gorgeous and um, you sit there and you look and it's just amazing and one of the first bays we went to we had the um, maritime police i think that's what you call them um, come with their guns over to our boat and took our um, passports and rang them through and then we got the okay that all was all right but that was quite a moment as well i mean i remember coming into um, the first place um, and we're trying to do the mid mooring for the first time and the guy is just getting the harbour master is standing there and he's just getting so angry and telling us to go and i remember walking around to see mark and saying mark he's telling us to go and mark had this huge big smile on his face and at that point i thought well if mark's still happy let's give it another go and we did um and we looked we both looked back at that time and laughed because it was just hilarious but we finally managed to do it and in the end we got pretty good at the mid mooring um, quite enjoyed it actually mid mooring and anchoring quite enjoyed going side on was okay and we got that down to a fine art but it was always a little bit i felt it was always a little bit more fought with things that could go wrong it's not so much going on but with going off but of course as i've told you mark just handles that boat so amazingly so it's you know it's having faith and trust in your captain is um, particularly good we, we reflect back now on our time in the Greek islands and know that it was probably going to be some of the best 
tripping around that we've done and a lot of people had told us that as well you know why are you going any further because this is where it is this is where we come every year this is the best that there is but what was really neat as I reflect on what's made the trip so amazing is not just the growth that Mark and I have had by doing this um, as a couple but also the people that we've met and it's people that you meet and the experiences you gain from them that is just incredible um, you know we met lovely people in Athens um, the, the guy next door to us on the boat he just helped us no end uh, then we were in Tavart in Montenegro and met this lovely couple who became like our boat family really. Um, the thing that was really cool was we had quite a few friends and family come stay um, and it was really neat early on that my brother and his wife and kids came because it was just cool to have the experience with them and as you know they came back and had another three and a half weeks with us. We had other friends come and stay too. Mark's got lots of people that are keen to help him and to travel with him and like he said the other day he's actually looking forward just to having some time on his own and I think that'd be neat because it'll give him a chance to see just what he can do with the boat and um, how he feels in terms of that. So all in all um, it's been quite a journey, quite a journey indeed. I've done more than I ever thought I would. Um, I've probably driven mad, Mark mad up the wall and down the other side because my comfort level wasn't as high as his so every noise on the boat or everything that I wasn't happy with I would ask him and it probably drove him batty. Um, I think for me the highlight was when I did something that I swore I would never do which was being at the helm um, for a number of hours but handling things and I remember there being um, three you know there was no traffic when I had that was handed over to me when Ross went down to have a sleep yet when I was on there suddenly all these boats were popping up on the AIS and one with our AIS but on the radar and having to navigate through that and knowing who gives way to who and what I needed to do in it there was this one moment I was standing there and I thought that boat is not moving past my windscreen so that's not good and I thought well I've got decisions to make I need to either wake Mark up which I wanted it to be my last decision of course or um, just pull back on the speed on the throttles or do a 10 or 20 degree turn and I remember just standing there and it was dark it was night time it was close to midnight and I'm thinking to myself just make a decision whatever you need to do just make a decision and so I did and um, I turned 20 degrees the other things that I've learnt is that even when the weather hasn't been good um, I've known that the boat is 100% safe and that's given me real courage to push through at, and during those times. I wouldn't describe it as a cruise and I wouldn't describe it as 100% um, relaxing. I'd describe it more as an experience that challenged me. Um, at times challenged Mark and myself as a couple and but an experience that I am very proud I did um, proud that Mark sort of pushed me into some things because it did make me do them otherwise I may not have done them um, but also knowing that I did them when I felt ready to do them so yes yeah, so that's a little bit of a reflection over the time that we were there there you go Marky, I hope I got the brief right, I hope this one is better for you and um, that we can get this one out as soon as possible. Uh, so I'm quite nervous about this, are you? No, because it's all paid for anyway, so why, what's there to be nervous about? It's not I'm going to give you a bill for it. No, but it's kind of indicative of, well apart from the fact that it's the starting point so it's going to be more expensive isn't it? So it'll yeah. only get better from here until maintenance costs go through the roof in the future. But at the end of the day, it could be a little bit scary. Maybe. Anyway, Maybe. How, how, so this is the cost reveal. The idea is to reveal what the boat costs, the capital items, and then um, what the running costs are. We'll try and work it out in cost per nautical mile, things like that. But then probably more importantly, is what does it cost to change your lifestyle and be on a liveaboard boat? if it's possible because neither of us know what the totals are right and this is the first time we've really sat down and talked about it so Fiona's done all the data collection and this is this is it 
So what I thought would be good is we'll do capital first. And then for the other stuff, we really want to be able to do, this is what it costs to maintain the boat. This is what it costs to run the boat fuel wise. And then this is what it costs to live. If we can group into those rather than doing fuel costs there, food here, Starlink. And you see what I mean? Well, yeah. All yeah. right, well, we can work through it. And what's it, what currency have you done it in? Well, no, some is in, well, one is in US, some is in EU, and some is in NZ dollars. Right, so we need we need everything in, I think, US dollars, because I think people understand that. So when we come to a total for a category, all we've got to do is multiply it by 0.6. If it's the New Zealand dollar one, you multiply that by 0.6, yeah, that's like US dollars. This here for the cabinet, so the tender and engine was 13,200 US. Okay, hang on, don't give numbers here, please. Right? I didn't think we were going to go through, forget the capital items, but for all the maintenance, we just want a total figure. Yeah, we are. But I'm just explaining this to you. That yeah. In this column here, I've got US, EU, and NZ dollars. So if if it's if that's how you want it to do, then I need to go away and do a bit more work before I can do that. Otherwise, we're going to be sitting here boring the people while I'm trying okay, to. Okay, so I think those. I think you need to go away and do that because otherwise, you're just going to have numbers that people don't understand. Yeah. It might be that you say this is the cost of the boat, and then at the end, this is what we spent on travel. This is what we spent on groceries and things like that because that's up to pe it's up to people what they spend on that isn't it yeah you know it depends whether you want to have steak every night or a greek salad every night yeah absolutely all right okay right well i'll get that done and we'll come back to you okay, okay so what we're doing marky well finally i think got all the numbers in the same currency i haven't seen them fiona hasn't totaled them yet so she's just got them all listed on a spreadsheet and then you're going to run a total down as we go away eh? yeah absolutely. okay yep. so the first yep. thing is you're going to move over this way a little bit otherwise you're not even on the picture okay i'm just trying to do my computer as well right, right. Okay. okay so first thing is um we decided we're going to break it into capital and costs and then normal living expenses that you would have at any time so Capital first is you know what was the price of the of Arunui NZ the boat. Oh, well that's a really good start because we've got that in US dollars. <laughs> it's the only thing that I've still got. You've got to be dollars. kidding me! I know that there is. That's it. Beside yeah, it. Yeah, there, 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 yeah, that's the NZ. Okay, so how much was the boat in NZ dollars? Well, how much was it in US dollars? Um, one point three eight. US. Right, so one million three hundred and eighty thousand dollars. So that's it worked out for us with the currency. Right, let's go get carried away here and get it down to the last cent. So it's two million one hundred and twenty three thousand seventy six and seventy six dollars. Yeah, we'll say two one two four then. Yeah. So two point one two four million to buy the boat. NZ. Yeah, NZ. Okay, so any other big asset items? Tender and engine. How much is that? Twenty-one thousand six hundred thirty-nine. Right. Can we just round twenty-one thousand seven hundred? You know that's really tough for a mathematician to just round. Yeah, yeah I know, but we don't because it gets confusing for people. Otherwise, we get heaps of yeah, numbers. Yeah, heaps of numbers. Twenty-one thousand seven hundred dollars for the tender and the engine. Right. And then what? What's the next biggest item? Uh, would be the chocks actually. No, the water maker. Ooh. The water maker was only 1,300. No, it wasn't. The water maker is about 13,530. Oh, sorry. That's the wrong thing. Right. right, and that's kind of, for massive assets, that's about it. And idea of other things that are in here is the cover for the tender, um, chocks for the tender, workshop equipment, the passerelle, um, the lines, and then you're starting to get down to really small items. And you got what? Wind thing. Yeah, that wind thingy. It's an anemometer. Oh, okay. Oh, yep. Yeah. Drone. Oh, okay. Drone <laughs> one and drone two. Okay, drone one. Was Hang two. on a minute. What, how do you spell it? No, don't worry about that. I haven't got time for all this. I have just, I've got to put it in now, don't I? Because I've just got rid of that. Otherwise, I don't know what it yeah. is. N-E-N-O-M-E-T-E-R. 
Right, and then drone one was 2,000? <coughs> NZ. Yep. Drone two, believe it or not, just to replace the flying bit, was 1,500. Right, okay. so go on, come on, total it. Do you want me to say it? Setting up Awanui NZ as an asset, all the assets, is $2,197,536. So that's the $73,536 that we've spent over and above the actual purchase of the boat. I'm amazed, I think that's very reasonable. I'm, I'm actually- I'm, Happy with that? Yeah, I, well, but yeah, happy, yes, why not? Okay. <laughs> and that's NZ, remember, we're just, we're just yep. putting that out there. Okay, then do we want to go, where would you like to go next? Well, now, now I think we go to fuel. Out of fuel. So okay. how much have we spent on Fuel. On fuel. Oh, that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. 22,000 rounded up, but that includes 7,000 sitting in the tanks. Right, so we've spent 22,000 NZ dollars in effectively five months, but she's full. So you've got to take seven off that. So effectively, $15,000 is what we've burned in fuel. Because you want that to do your per kilometre, your yeah, per nautical, per nautical mile. mile. So we've spent $15,000 NZ on fuel. All right, maintenance. So this is... Would have been good if you told me the order you wanted this This thing. is oil changes, anodes, bits Elect and pieces. Electrical for, spears, marine shop. Yeah, all, all, all the items so far for maintenance. What does that add up to? 4,000, so 4,800. Okay, 4,800. NZ dollars in five months. I there did, could I just be. I didn't think it would be that much, but that's okay. Yep. Okay. Okay, so a lot of the stuff we haven't actually used yet. So there's still a full kit of spares there, like the, there's replacement belts for the generator, there's some anodes, there's more filters, we've got um, all fuses and stuff like that. So it hasn't actually been used on the boat, but we've, we've paid for it as so. Arguably, you could say that's an asset. Marina costs. Yeah. So this is our choice to be on a marina, and bearing in mind, like when you're in Greece, you can be paying eight, 10 euros, 16 to 20 dollars overnight, but when you're in Montenegro and some of the places, it was 120, 150. Now I can also point out it also that it does include Monastir, where the boat currently is. Yeah, but that's, a, that's an annual cost for us. That is, eh? Yeah. So I've put it in there. You yeah, don't want so, it as separate, do you? Right, so 816 is okay. not right. No, it's not right. You're that's right. euros. It was, it was two lots. Ah. It was that. Okay, you got two that. lots. Well done. Okay, yes. what's that total for marina costs? 4,300. That's okay. It's all right, Don't eh? you think? Oh, I think so. Yep. So for five months of us feeling like we can go to a marina when we want to, some of them quite expensive, but then some very cheap. And for the next six months, you're not going to get those cheap ones. Yeah. Yeah, it's very That's okay. Out, so eh? so that, what's that? That's 9,000 a year. Then. What's next? What about insurance? All right, so I know this number. So the insurance for the boat is basically 15,000 NZ. 15,400. 15,400 NZ. And that's got a $15,000 excess on it. So if we make a claim, we pay the first 15,000. I might point out there is not one scratch on Awanui NZ yet. That's um, because of the good crew you've had on board. It is. Yeah, but I'm not going to have them. So watch this space. Starlink. So here's Starlink. This will be good. Um, so what does it cost us to communicate? So that's 3,200. That's a lot. But that's the initial setup, months. isn't it? That's the buying of it too. Oh, okay. So that's it. Well, that's take really that an out? asset. No, that's all right. That's okay. It can stay there. So it's so cost it, us three thousand two hundred in. But if you take the asset out, it's two one. Yeah, true. It's yep. two thousand one hundred for Starlink. Okay. And to be fair, um, from YouTube, since they monetized us, we're getting sort of six, seven, eight hundred a month. So if you do that over six months. That's 30, and, that's, and that's what we were saying to pay for that, yeah, isn't it? So, so that, that's pays, quite good. that pays for communication and right. and the ability to upload, download, and all that, which is useful. So, galley and boat fit out. All right. Okay. So that that's really an asset as well. Yeah, but I wanted to separate. Yeah. So you've separated so that out. Yep. And what I've done so that people can see is what Nordhaven supplies, what I bought from home, and what we bought. Okay, so we've got a full list here of the fit out for the boat. What does that add up to? Okay, 2,400. 2, so that's, that's, eh? that's okay. 
Yeah. Well, basically, you set up a house. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now let's go to say entertainment. So, entertainment. You know, I know that it can be sort of seen as being different for different people. But I think what have we eaten now? Probably overall three times a week. Oh. No, because when we're on the boat, we don't really eat out. Well, it depends. You mean not overall, time meal no, or no, yeah, but going overall, out for? We would have had. We do a lot of like coffees. Yeah, um, but, but, beers but, but, but and if you that go, the, thing, if you go the, the bigger the bigger amounts, twice a week probably wouldn't we? Yeah, I We'd think eat so. Out. Yeah, I think that's So this better. is for yeah. about twice a week. So if you eat out twice a week, this is potentially what you might like to budget for being away. And you do tend to eat out a little bit more because when friends and family come. You know, they want to eat out, they're on a holiday. So you have one lot of friends come and you, you go out for dinner and you think, oh yeah, we might not go out next week, but then it's a new lot of friends then or a new group of family. So they want to go out. So you've got to be prepared that when you're doing this kind of thing, you are eating out a little bit more than what you, what you would normally. Oh, so, it's a big column, Marky. Okay, so that's 8,100. I'm, I'm a bit surprised at that. That doesn't t take into account like there's a couple there like Malini where we paid the bill but then others have paid us back. Yeah, okay. But give or take, we're talking eight grand. Yeah. So eight grand for five months, so about 1,500 a month. But if you think of that as being, yeah. we're not on holiday, we're living it. Yeah. But that's also like we go, we go to, like you get you in breakfast, somewhere. breakfast, you have. You go and sit somewhere, you have a beer, you have yeah. a cat, you have coffee. Yeah. Like most places, even like we were in the Greek islands and you, we stopped. And there's a lovely cafe there. You, you go think, straight oh, off and have a beer and have, or, it, and have lunch know? or something. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. So, so, yeah, okay, that's fair enough. 8,000 NZ for five months living on a boat in the Mediterranean for entertainment. I mean, now try being on holiday for that long. Food. Okay, so that's kind of all the, the costs that you could say are different to living at home. I mean, what did we spend on food other than being on... The boat, 5900 so 1000 a month, $250 a week. Okay. And that probably reflects that we've eaten out quite a bit. Because that's yeah, a bit yeah, lower right. than what you'd spend yeah, yeah, at home. Yeah. So nothing funny there. We've got my, uh, miscellaneous. What's miscellaneous? Well, things that we weren't really sure what they were. So well, give me some examples. Uh, noon site sub, Royal New Zealand Coast Guard. Uh, oh, okay. Then there's All right, miscellaneous added up. I mean, it's rats and mice. Look at it. There you go, folks. Miscellaneous is $1,176, so let's forget that. All right, so now let's take those totals other than assets. So now for five months, living on Arwenui NZ, we'll do two totals. Oh, hang on, we haven't done oil. Well, that's maintenance. Well, I haven't got that in maintenance. Why I'd have we not got... Because I said, I thought you would like to know exactly what you spent on oil. Cause I oil do, is a, but it's maintenance, it was isn't a, it? Well, it's not, well... Total, please. So this is maintenance again. We've got to add this on to the previous maintenance cost of 4500 Let's add now. Now I'm going to be shocked. Another $3,300. Okay, let me see what other wow. little totals I've got. Okay. So maintenance for five months is actually 7,000 bucks. No, you've got that stuff that you haven't used yeah, yet. Okay, let's take and have 15... you got oil on the boat that you haven't used? No, let's take $1,500 off then. Yeah. So that's oh, right. cruising fees. Cruising fees. Oh, here we go. See, just as well you've got me. Okay, right. cruising, cruising fees. fees. So the co this is the cost of being in the Greek islands, being in Croatia, being in Montenegro. You have to pay to have your boat there. Italy, you don't. $1,700. Okay, $1,700. So that's Agent not, fees. That's not, oh, there's more. Yeah. Okay, agents fees. And this is quite, it's 1300 1300 but now we do that ourselves. Yeah. What's the Corinth Canal doing in there? Oh, that shouldn't be in there. Where should that go? That should be in the fees. Okay, hang on. Well picked up. You, you know, when you're doing something this massive, a spreadsheet, there is going to be the occasional... Right, and how are we going to make sure that... And, when, and I just have to explain something else. I'm not on, when I'm on the boat and you're not, that we keep this up to date so you don't end up with a massive task like this again. Well, it was not a massive task. I mean, it was huge putting it together, but... Because it'd be kind of neat. We can ignore that. That's my phone ringing. Okay. And we found out that to go through the canals in Scotland for a month is 800 pounds. 
So it's going to be coming up this year for one month. I think it's the idea of that is to cut people out a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah, to cut, well, it's oh. to basically to keep the voting numbers to a reasonable number, isn't it? So it was $638. There's something wrong there. Why's oh, that? no, that's right. It was 300 euros, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. $638 to go through that Corinth Canal for half an hour. It's the experience, though, Yeah, it's the experience. Oh, it's it's like when you go... I wouldn't do it again. Yeah, I wouldn't either. And, but and people say, it. oh, yeah, but it saves all the fuel going round. But, but the going round's the fun, that you're on a boat to go around places. So we, we missed out on that entire peninsula just to go through this bloody channel that's been cut out of limestone that could collapse on you at any point. Marky, I don't know why you've been such a downer about it. It was an, am it was an amazing an experience. Hour. What has five months in retirement on a boat cost us over and above the capital okay. costs. Okay, well what I've done is I've got another spreadsheet here which has it, but I have to take the amounts from here onto there. So let's, let's just do stop that, that and, then... and come back. Right, okay, I get it. Okay. All right, so let's sum this up then. We are going to have the first total is going to be what did the boat and assets cost? Okay, so the cost of the boat with, with fitted out, tender, water maker, everything. 2.2. Okay, so 2.2 million NZ. All right, I know that's a large number, I don't want to say it flippantly, but at the end of the day, that is the price of a really nice house in Auckland or in the middle of Wellington. So let's put it in perspective. Hey. Yeah. All right, okay, so it's that cost, NZ dollars. Yeah. Okay, and so then now what did we spend on everything else except air travel? and accept our normal food, because it's, whether you're on the boat or at home, you're gonna be buying food, and you travel during the year to go somewhere, don't you? So, so this is the, the cost of a boat, the maintenance, the fuel, um, eating out, because you do that a lot more because we're on the boat, cruising fees, things like that. 58,700. 58, okay, so 58,700 NZ for five months. So you can basically say, about 130,000 NZ a year, it probably. It's interesting that you had said to allow, when we first did this, you were allowing about 10,000 a month. 120, yeah. Is yeah. what you said. It's a lot, of, it's a lot. It's a little bit more than what I was maybe thinking, but yeah, anyway. but isn't there stuff in there that we're not gonna... Like what? Well, cruising fees, there won't be, or it might be though. Yeah, but then there'll be other stuff. Eating out is probably the biggest. If I'm, that's going to go way down for me just being on yeah. the boat on my own. But anyway, so that's that's the cost. And then um, the other one's basically fifteen thousand dollars, isn't it, for transport and food back home? Yeah. That that you would spend anyway. So well, if, on we've done about we've done about four hundred and fifty hours running now. What's four hundred and fifty hours times? Six and a half knots. It's about 3,000 miles, isn't it? 400. And 50. Yeah. Times, say, seven. So we've, prob we've done 3,150 nautical miles. So now if you divide that 58,700 by 3,150, what do you get? Wow. Every nautical mile costs $18 NZ. Far out. Every nautical mile you do, I and mean, we'll do a bit of checking on these numbers, we'll go through them again and maybe update you in a future one, basically means it's costing 18 NZ dollars, so about you know, 12 dollars US, about 10 euros for every nautical mile. So that's something to bear in mind. And what was it that you'd worked it out on the fuel? Just by the, well, the, the well, fuel. Well, the fuel. Okay, let's do the fuel. So the fuel is fifteen thousand dollars. So divide fifteen thousand by three one five zero. Four seventy six. So four dollars seventy six per nautical mile on fuel, and a litre is about three dollars. So we are going through about one point two litres per nautical mile, which is a, which kind of confirms the fuel flows that we were working on on the boat wasn't it so i'm yeah. very very happy with that um but, but the, the, the big thing for me is 
I think, to run this boat per year, the first year is going to be the biggest. I suspect we need about 130,000, don't we? Yeah. NZ. Per year. Yeah. So what's, what's 130,000 no, multiplied on. by 0.61? 79,000. So you need about 80,000 US to run this boat. There you go, people. The big cost reveal. Wow. What's your feeling? It's in line with what I thought, and I think we're pretty spot on because I think some of those prices are inflated. So I reckon your original thing, I don't know where you picked the number out of your head, of 10,000 a month is pretty spot on. Well, 10,000 is a round number, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you sit you there and you 20, look at 000, it. You could have 20,000, that's a round number too. Yeah, yeah, I know, but... So, I'm, I, yeah, I can live with that, eh? Yeah. Can you? Yeah. It's fantastic. So now what we need to do is just keep that up because I think yeah. the next six months are going to be a lot, lot cheaper. Yeah. And your winters will probably be a lot cheaper than your summers because you're not yeah, going to yeah, be entertaining as much. Yeah, you're, just, yeah, you know, yeah. you're just surviving yeah. and living. Yeah. And then the next time we do an update, it'll be after our first year. Okay. And then we'll have a really good idea, won't we? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably, you know, I was hoping we might be able to do it for a hundred grand. To be honest, that was my hope. But and and it may well come down to that in the end. But then maintenance costs are going to go up, aren't they? So anyway, there you go. Well, and that's, those are the numbers. And that's the thing about a boat that you know you have to if you want to keep it up to date, isn't it? You know, keep the boat good. Yeah. So the assets there. The assets there, and it's the same as on a house. It's no different to a house. Yep. Yeah, but it? you don't. You know. Anyway, that's what it is. You heard it here. How are you feeling about it? All right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You I mean you always hope it's going to be a bit less, don't you? Yeah. But um, no. You know, big costs in there are fifteen grand on fuel and fifteen grand on insurance. I mean, that's thirty. Just like before that. Before you do anything. Right. So, well, that was the. Cost of running the boat for five months. And part of coming home um, was to look at getting some of the stuff that we need on the boat that I found it difficult to source and get when over in Europe. So, you know, really boating industry over there. But the minute you put a B in front of anything, as I pointed out in some of my videos, the price seems to explode. So... One of the things that I found quite frustrating was um, the cost of replacing anything to do with John Deere. I mean, it's just scary, scary stuff. So, um, you remember us taking these out on the boat. So they are the zinc anodes that are in the seawater supply for cooling the John Deere engines. Now, when I bought those in Europe, they're basically between 20, 25 and 30 euros each. There are four on the engines and they need replacing about every three months, maybe every four months. So say three times a year. So four times three is 12 and 12 times, say 30 at the worst, is 300 odd euros is $600 buying the John Deere parts. So I've heard about this guy in Auckland and we're going to put it on the bottom of this episode down below. You'll see it there. Who supplies all kinds of anodes for all kinds of uses. Fantastic. And so I got in touch with him. I explained what I had. He asked what the thread was and everything. And here are the replacement anodes that he sent through to me to go in the engine. Twelve of those. 12 of those for 32 euros. 60 odd dollars. So that's a whole supply of those for 60 odd dollars for a year compared to $600. So that was mission successful. So I've got those to take back. And then um, I haven't been that happy with the Bimini from a structural point of view. I've been a little bit nervous. There's been a couple of comments coming back about just how secure that top canopy is, particularly from the front. So 
What I've decided to do is to put a couple of cross braces from the arms that come down to the top of the visor around the flybridge. So we'll do those at 45 degrees coming in. It's not going to spoil the look, I don't think. And it's going to just stop a little bit of a vibration or a shimmy from the left to right that we've noticed when we're going along. But more importantly is, is the vertical load being held down um, from the bimini so that in a storm or something like that, it can't rip that front off, which then, of course, would rip the back off. So my idea there is, if you can imagine the steering station on the flybridge, you can probably all picture that. I'll try and get a photo up here, cut in on it. Um, there's the two bars along the bimini at the top. What I want to do is I am going to secure these onto the top of the helm station, which is fiberglass, and that fiberglass is secured to the main structure of the boat. I'm going to fix it down through here with a plate underneath and then bolt through. And then on there, we have that going up and a pin in there that can go in and out. So the idea being that, you know, nice weather, day to day, you don't have them there. But then I've got the option of when there's stormy weather or you're going to be leaving the boat somewhere for a long time or I might even fit it in a, if I'm happy with it and I don't feel like it's in the way, permanently fit it. And that will have a 25mm stainless steel between effectively those top bars and the main structure of the boat. Now those are probably €15 Euros each, each piece. Maybe even more, depending on where you get them in Europe. I bought them on Timu. Hold your breath. Bought them on Timu. 316 stainless steel. Now, you know, time's going to tell, but I'm prepared to give it a go. And they're basically five euros each. Ten bucks. So way, way, way less than half the price. Everything I need to do that job has cost about $100, 50 euros. So... Um, pretty amazing, really. And there's, a, there's a, the clamps there to go around the 25mm that then secures on, you know, you set it so that it's nice and tight. So, you know, to me, they look high-quality pieces. We, will, we shall see. They come from China, free freight, all the way down from China. So that was pretty amazing. So I've got those. Then um, also the fuel filters for the Raycor system for the polishing. I mean, again, these things are pretty expensive up there. Here, they're about half the price. And for the solar, because the solar, you remember, the 6mm tinned positive and negative cable from the controller to the 24-volt DC bus and to the negative bus bar is not... Um, secure enough or not um, heavy enough. So I got onto this fantastic guy. Again, I'm going to put it on the um, YouTube at the bottom there. He made me up. This is 16 mil, and he made it all up with the right connectors at the end, with the connection here to go into the controller. I've got plenty of cable, so I'm taking all that back, and that's enough to do from the controller to the negative bus and from the controller to the 24 volt DC bus. And I mean, that was just, that's fantastic. It's all made up, ready to go. And to go in line with that is this fuse panel, which those secure onto, and two 60 amp fuses. So one to go in and a replacement one so that we can protect that line up to 60 amps and with the 16 mil cable, it's going to be able to take all the current that the controller puts out when converting it from 100 volt panels down to 24 volt DC for the boat. I mean, that's really exciting to, to get that back on to um, operation. Recognize these. You've seen those before. 250 amp DC fuses blown two of those, so I've got two replacements. I mean, they're about 50 or $60. I 
up in Europe, if you can get them, well over 100. So we'll take those back with us. And then the last thing there for the solar system is the Bluetooth dongle, because the controller that I got, the 100 by 50, may have to replace that. Apparently that's a bit on the light side. So we might have to go to um, a 150 by 75. Um, that dongle then enables me to Bluetooth all the solar data up to the pilot station or my iPad. So that's going to be really useful. When I got a price for that, $120 through this guy, $60 odd dollars. And then the last thing, if I can find where I put the darn thing, here it is behind the camera, um, a whole lot of um, 210 PMOR 30 micron fuel filters for the Raycor system or the pre-filter system before the diesel goes into the engines. And again, these are probably 20 euros over there and got them for the equivalent of about 10 euros here, so about half the price. So that's all the stuff that we are taking back with us. Um, and that's a cost now, it's probably a couple of thousand dollars worth of gear. Um, but in the end, it's going to mean that the ongoing maintenance of Awanui NZ from a fuel engine electrical point of view, hopefully, will be um, cut in half. So yeah, I've got to get all that back to Tunisia. We were trying to take carry-on bags only, but I've decided that I think all that cable, um, this fuse box and cylindrical things might just gather the interest of security and somebody might have a hissy fit. So I think we're gonna get another bag and I'm gonna take some warm weather gear back with me as well. So a few jobs to do when I get back, but um, yeah, they're all really positive things, particularly the solar. We go back on Sunday, three days from now. Wow, can't believe it. 6th of October already. Gosh, gosh, gosh. Wow, okay. Amazing things happen in life. So this arrived in the mail and it's from a guy, David, in Australia. He is one of our YouTube followers. He sent me an email and he basically said, I just can't continue to watch you fishing like you're fishing. You're not catching any fish. The lures you're using are crap. And he's had a life in fishing and he put together for me a package of 12 lures that apparently is going to create carnage in the Mediterranean. So let's open it and see what we've been sent because this is pretty amazing. Look at this. Oh my goodness. How generous is that for someone to... Look at this. Now they're lures. That is a lure. How could any self-respecting fish not go for that? Look at that. He sent us a dozen lures that can go on the end of my rigs and he said to me, get in touch and he will talk me through setting up my rigs and everything like that. So look, I mean, look at this, look. look. Are, you, are you gonna pack them back in I'm there gonna again? Pack, I'm gonna pack them, yeah, I'm gonna pack them back up. Look, look at this, look, fish for dinner. We are gonna have fish for dinner. Look out the Mediterranean fish supplies, woo! That is so generous, David. Dave, I guess. And what's he got here? Hi, Mark. I've sent you a number of different lures that you'll be able to troll behind your boat between four and six knots. If you need any other information on fishing or using these lures, please let me know. I'm hoping to be able to do what you're doing in the next 12 to 18 months. I'm looking to get an N60 and travel along the north coast of Australia at first and head overseas once I get the experience on the boat. Good luck with the next trip. How yeah, lovely. How cool is that? Bit overwhelming. <laughs>